Hi, today we're going to show you how to build a folding hex suit. Unlike conventional designs, this suit requires no tape to set up, making it ideal for temporary structures that require easy and quick assembly and dismantling. You will need a straight edge, chalk string, marker and tape measure for marking where you want to cut the panels, preferably both a box cutter and a longer knife for cutting, a rag to wipe down the panels and, most importantly, you will need bi-directional filament strapping tape and professional grade aluminium foil tape. Bi-filament tape is used for strength, where aluminium tape is used for protection from the sun and rain. You will also want at least two six-foot trestle tables. Cut four one-inch thick pieces of PVC pipe which will be used for the doors. You will need five 4 by 8 foot panels of hard foam insulation. We have used both Armax and Hunter XCI panels. Armax is cheaper, lighter and can be sourced easily at hardware stores such as Home Depot. The Hunter in comparison is a much stronger and superior material, but it is heavier, more expensive and difficult to source and uses fiberglass which can be a pain to work with. If you do decide to go with the Hunter, we recommend wearing proper protective equipment and work clothes that you don't mind getting covered in fiberglass. Mark the panels on the 8 foot sides at 2, 4 and 6 feet respectively. Then draw lines through the whole breadth of the panel with the T-square. Mark one side of the panel at 2 and 6 feet, then mark the other side at 4 feet. For making long marks, using a chalk string is the easiest solution. Line up the string with the 2 foot mark on the one side and the corner of the panel on the other. Make sure it is nice and tight before making your marking. Now, repeat this step across the length of the panel. You should end up with three isosceles and two right angle triangles per sheet. Draw a line down the center of the isosceles triangles so that you end up with eight right angle triangles. Make sure to be very precise as even being a little off can make a big difference. Score the marked side of the panel with your knife or box cutter. Then flip it over and cut the opposite side. This creates much less mess than using a circular or table saw, and you can get quite accurate with it. Repeat this same process for the roof pieces. You should end up with 12 rectangles and 12 right angle triangles. There will be some extra roof pieces which you can hold on to if you decide to make another unit. Line up two rectangular pieces, wipe away any residue that may stop the tape from sticking, and apply the 4 inch bifilament tape. Make sure to do this on the side of the panel that has no logos or writing. This will be the outside of the hex suit. Fold one panel onto the other and tape the inside of the hinge. We call this a book bind. Use the 6 inch tape this time as there is more surface area to cover. Cover the outside hinge with aluminium foil tape. Bifilament tape is strong but it corrodes in the sun so the aluminium is there to protect it and give it a longer life. You can do this before doing the inside hinge, but it is good practice to do last when starting out, just in case you made a mistake and need to redo it. Where the bifilament tape requires a blade to cut it, the aluminium tape can easily be torn with your hands. Make sure to use a rag to smooth it down as the edges can be sharp. Repeat the same process on the roof pieces, hinging together the straight length of the triangles. There will always be a bit of a gap at the point of the roof, and with the way the yurt folds, it is a good idea to open that gap more. Measure and cut off 2.5 inches of the triangle tips. This will create a 5 inch in diameter circle in the roof of the yurt when it is set up. This is great for installing an air vent and makes the final taping step much easier. Seal the cut ends with bifilament or aluminium tape so particles don't break off. You should do this on all parts of the yurt that will have exposed foam. Attach three of the newly seamed squares together using the same hinging technique as before. Make sure to start the seam from the inside this time, in other words, the side that has the logos on it. You should end up with one 12 foot long rectangle and each 2 by 4 foot piece should fold in alternate directions. This will be one half of the wall. Now choose which side will be the bottom of the yurt and run a line of bifilament tape along the exposed edge to protect the foam as you will inevitably drag the yurt along the ground when setting it up. It doesn't actually matter which side you choose to be the bottom, as long as you do the same on the other half. Have one person hold the tape in place while the other smooths it down. You don't actually need to seal the last panel and can stop taping before that. You will see why in the next step. 
Make sure to cut the bifilament tape on the edge and the book bound side of each hinge or you won't be able to fold it up. Remember to use aluminium. Cut the aluminium foil like you did the bifilament tape. Doing this twice may seem redundant, but it allows you to use the back of the box cutter as the foil tape will blunt the blade very easily. The final panel that we didn't seal will be the door. Measure and cut one inch off the bottom as this will prevent the door from dragging on the ground when opening. Score it with the box cutter and then use the long blade to finish the cut. This is cleaner than just using the blade as a box cutter's blade is much thinner. Seal all three edges of the door with aluminium tape. You don't need to use bifilament as the chances of these edges scraping on something are low. This door will use a simple design with a hole on the door and opposite panel that can be tied or locked with chain or rope. Mark and cut out the hole a bit higher than halfway down the panel. Where exactly doesn't matter too much as long as you do the same on the other side. Fit the piece of one inch PVC pipe snugly into the hole. Take strips of bifilament tape and loop it halfway through the PVC, attaching it to the panel from the inside and outside. Four pieces should be plenty. Cover the exposed tape with aluminium. You only need to do the outside. We did the inside purely for aesthetic reasons. When done, just poke your finger through the hole and smooth it out. Now repeat the process on the other side of the 12 foot rectangle. Flip the walls over so the inside is facing up and attach the triangles to the top of the walls. In other words, the side that we didn't seal with bifilament tape. It is more important to have the center hinge in line with each other as opposed to the edges. Like you did when you sealed the bottom of the walls, make sure to cut the bifilament on both sides where the seam of the walls and roof meet or else it won't be able to close. For the final roof, make sure to not tape the door panel. You can now easily identify the door from the one inch gap you made on the bottom. Seal the bottom of this roof panel with aluminium tape. You don't have to seal the long edge as these will be seamed together in the next step. You have now built half of the yurt. Good job. Now, fold it up from the door side first. If it doesn't want to fold, check your seams to make sure you have not missed any cuts that could be stopping it. Make sure to leave the last panel unfolded as you will attach the second half of the yurt over it like two Tetris pieces. Notice if folded correctly, the door panel will be on the top of the fold. Repeat steps five to seven until you have two identical pieces. Flip one of them around so the open panel is on the top. Lift it up and place it on top of the other half. This is what your yurt will look like fully folded. Lift the first two roofs and walls on the one side of the yurt and put something under to hold it up. Bookbind the two roofs together and then repeat the step on the middle two panels. We will only be doing the outside bookbound hinge for now. The inside hinge will come later. You will want to repeat these steps on the other side of the yurt before moving on to the bottom two panels. If two panels are pushing apart, you can use a tape patch to hold it in place while you tape the whole length. Chances are not all the panels will be perfectly flush with each other, but that's okay. If you want to be more precise, you can always shave off a bit of one panel. Flip the yurt over and do the last two panels on each side. Now for the big reveal. Pull the panel opposite the door till it is at 90 degrees between the next two panels. If you build it right, you should have one door on each side, but it doesn't matter which you start with. Reach down and pull the two panels apart until both roof and wall hinges pop into place. Then repeat this on the other side. Lastly, unfold the door panels on both sides and there you have it. Time to do the inside roof hinges. It is normal for the outside hinge to come apart in places after opening the yurt. Don't worry about this. Simply pull the two panels back together and tape patch it in place. Do the same on the top of the roof. This is where it is helpful to have the circle that we made by cutting the tips off the triangles. Remember to cut the tape if it overlaps with any of the book bound hinges. Cut a long strip of bifilament, fold it back sticky side up and apply it at the point of the hinge. Smooth it down with your finger and then smooth out the sides. This will give you a nice clean finish. Take little tape patches and seal all the corners to prevent rain from getting in. We recommend reinforcing the top of the door with bifilament tape since it will be the hinge that will see the most use and have the most pressure applied to it. Apply a long strip to both the outside and inside. You can use either 4 inch or 6 inch tape for this. 
Don't forget about the aluminium. We are going to add some strips of shower tape to the inside of the door to help seal the edges from rain when the door is closed. Affix it so about half of the material rests above the door. We recommend reinforcing the tape with bifilament as it doesn't stick too well. We also encourage you to figure out a better door mechanism and if you do, we would love to hear about it. Trim the tip of the tape on the inside edge of the door so it doesn't crinkle when closed. Now you are done and it is time to close up the yurt. Repeat the process of opening the yurt in reverse. Fold one door panel over first so it is sandwiched between two panels and then do the same on the other side. It is very important that you do the step correctly. If you try and force the yurt closed, you could badly damage it. Lift up on the remaining two corners until you get a big gap in the shape of an upside down V where the door is. This is critical to allowing the yurt to fold closed. Apply light pressure in the center of the panel at the point where the roof and walls meet. Make sure you do this on the left hand side which is the panel that does not have the corner that the door closes on. Check that no doors opened up during this step. Lastly, grab both sides of the last corner from the point where the roofs and walls meet. Lift it up and apply light pressure till again the left side panel collapses. If you stuck to the door design, you should end up with both sides having a hole on the right panel. Thanks for watching. We hope this has inspired you to build your own folding hex yet. Bye for now.